this is Omar at Top 5 E-Bikes, and this is a full review of the Ventana Bound Cargo E-Bike. For those of you that have been following Top 5 E-Bikes, you know that I love cargo e-bikes. I've been making cargo e-bikes since early 2021. I'm up to around 10 videos. I've ridden the most popular cargo e-bikes, and I have to say that this is my favorite one so far. So you can stop watching this video if that's all you wanted to find out. Uh, but you're, if you're interested, you can keep on watching. I'll tell you why it's my favorite over all the cargo e-bikes that I've ridden. In this review, I'm gonna go over the specs of the Abound, and then I'm gonna share with you the things that I liked and I didn't like about the Abound. And I'm gonna close out and tell you why I think this is my favorite affordable cargo e-bike. If you haven't subscribed to Top 5 e-bikes, please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video or this type of content. Also like this video, that'll help us with the algorithm. And if we've helped you decide on buying the Abound, please use our link because we do get a small commission and that helps us continue making videos like this one. All right, let's talk about the specs of the Venton Abound cargo e-bike. Price-wise, at the time I'm filming, it's $17.99. Uh, the retail price is $21.99, so it's uh, $400 off at the time I'm filming. They have had sales recently, so be on the lookout. I do have a few accessories on this bike that you would not get stock. One of them is this front basket, which I really like. It has a little bit of a mesh liner, and then I bought a net from REI for about five bucks. I have the handrails, which I think if you have children, smaller kids, you would need to get or you should get, I would recommend it. And then I have two child seats. So I have a Yet Maxi, um, and then I have for, that's for my younger daughter who's about three. And then for my older daughter who's about to turn five, I have this older kid seat, which we bought from the Netherlands called the Kibble. So I have a few accessories. These are not stock, um, but, uh, these are ones that I would recommend. We'll probably do another video where I'll talk about all the accessories that I have on this bike. But um, for now, let me just go over the specs of this bike. So I do wanna start off with a couple things. One is just the payload because this is a cargo e-bike. So the total payload on this is 440 pounds. So that's total what you could be carrying on the bike. And on the rear rack, and you can see, obviously I have the two seats that I just talked about, but you can carry 143 pounds on the rear rack. So if you were carrying 140 pounds in the back, that means that the rider can be 300 pounds theoretically, or at least based on the specs of this bike. So pretty good amount of payload compared to other cargo e-bikes because uh, a bike like the Radwagon, which is actually seems like a bigger bike and frame has a lower payload. So the other thing just cargo bike related is that you have this like super sturdy kickstand um, and it's one of these double kickstands, uh, which I really like. In comparison to say the Flyer and the, the Electric Expedition, they have kickstands that in my opinion are not as sturdy. So to me, the payload, um, the kickstand, those are really important uh, pieces of a cargo e-bike. So now let me move on to some of the other major specs. So one of them is that it has, and let me, Let's go around, maybe you could see it from the back here. You have an Aventon, you have an Aventon branded 750 watt motor. Aventon doesn't say how many newton meters of torque, although um, some publications say that it's 80 newton meters of torque. So um, I'm not sure, but that's what a lot of publications are saying. So 80 newton meters of torque, 750 watts. It does have a torque sensor, you can't see it, but that's one of the major uh, features of this e-bike that it has a torque sensor rather than a cadence sensor like all other affordable cargo e-bikes. Battery wise and you have it integrated there you have a removable 48 volt 15 amp hours so it's 720 watt hours. I've ridden this bike on one full charge about 30 miles 30 miles and I still had 31 percent of the battery left so I think I could have gotten probably about 40 to 45. Um, here in about a month, I'm supposed to go on a, on a camp and ride trip where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this bike around 50 miles each way. So I'll have to figure out how, we're gonna, how I'm going to squeeze out a few more miles out of it. But um, So I might have to charge halfway. But um, I'm pretty comfortable with, if you know, if you ride in lower pedal assist levels that you can get 40 to 45, maybe even up to 50, what they say, because Aventon is pretty good about 
their estimates being pretty accurate. So it's not like these out of the world comp uh, estimates that a lot of e-bikes uh, make. So theirs is pretty accurate. But, um, you know, again, I've ridden this in another month um, when I go on this long trip, that I, this camping trip. I'll definitely report how many miles I got out of this. It comes with a front suspension, which is kind of nice. That's also another really nice feature for a cargo bike that you don't necessarily get with the really popular ones, like say the Rad Wagon, the Electric Expedition, the Flyer, there's no suspension. Another really nice uh, feature of this bike compared to other affordable cargo e-bikes is that this one comes with Tektro hydraulic brakes. Like the Rad Wagon and the Flyer cargo bike, none of those have, neither one of those have hydraulic brakes, they have mechanical brakes. So also a really nice feature that comes with this bike. Some other features that come stock on this bike, which are kind of cool, and I think they're extras for sure that no other bikes come with, is that you have a little bag, which is kind of nice. You can throw your phone in there. You can throw a charger, tools. Um, you also have these protectors here if you have, if you're carrying kids or you're carrying someone in the back so their feet don't get stuck there with uh, the back wheel. So it comes with integrated lights. Here you see the back light. And then you have one in the front, which is kind of nice as well. It's a pretty nice light, decent light at least. Um, and then you also have fenders. So they're metal fenders that it comes with. So that's all stock, which is kind of nice. You also have these footboards. So this is stock. If you notice the other side, I actually don't have it on. And that's because I was actually pulling a burly trailer. And that's what this is. This is for a burly B. You can't actually have them on. Or I haven't figured out a way. I think you can use an extension, but I haven't messed with it that much. Okay, let's continue with some of these other specs. One of them, which is kind of cool, is the seat. It's not a suspension seat, but it definitely acts a little bit like a suspension seat. So it's kind of nice. It, it, it helps cushion. So I think between this and the suspension post, it just makes for a really comfortable ride, especially for a cargo bike. Okay, and then the handlebars, it's kind of nice. You can actually fold them. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. There we go, folded them. And you can bend it. It's not as compact as the Electric Expedition where you can take off the pedals, but it's still kind of nice. It's still helpful for me actually when I'm parking this in my garage because it does give me a little bit more space. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of nice. And then let's see what we got in the cockpit up here. I'm gonna turn this on. It turns on oh yeah still got to press a button cockpit wise so you have these grips these rubber grips which are kind of nice um, I don't have any complaints about these rubber grips you have a left thumb throttle which is standard I think with events and bikes you have here the little your little controller you have the screen that now um, is standard on all events and bikes which by the way, you can sync up this bike to the app. Um, the top speed on this one, unfortunately, is 20 miles per hour, which I mentioned it in another video, but um, you can check out some stats in, in the app, which is kind of nice. And then on this right-hand side, what you see over here is your Revo shifter, which is a Shimano Revo shifter. I kind of like this better than the thumb shifter, those big gray Shimano shifters. So I, I think this half twist shifter is a little bit nicer. And um, you do have a Shimano drivetrain. So you see the derailleur somewhere down here. Here you go, which is a tourney. But uh, the other thing that's kind of cool, and we'll show this right now, is, let's see. Okay, so now we have the lights on. And can you see that? So that is a turn signal and they're actually like really bright. So it's kind of cool, a cool feature, I think. So that's definitely an upgrade um, that they've been making on all the Ventum bikes. So I kind of like the shifter. Um, I have a friend that rode this bike and um, she really liked the shifter. Couple last items on this bike are that you have these smaller tires. So you have these 20 inch by four inch tires, both the front and the back. That doesn't seem to be the norm anymore because you're starting to see bikes that have one big one, one small one, or a couple big ones. Um, 
The only other bike I can think of that has two smaller ones is Electric Expedition. And then dimensions wise, the step over height, so the height from the floor to this um, part of the bike over the step over frame is pretty low. So we'll add this to the description, but just know that that's one of the other features of this bike that it has a really low step over height. And so it makes it really approachable for most people. One note, and if you watched my first impressions video, I talked about one of the negatives of this bike for me was that the Yet Maxi seat, which is the most popular seat there is, I think for carrying a kid, the, by the way, this, this seat is made by Thule, um, that it wasn't integrated, or I thought that it wasn't integrated. Turns out it is. So you can actually add it to the rack as is. You do not need an adapter. So I made a mistake when I first um, posted the first video and when I was first writing it that I thought it didn't fit. And uh, Ventum reached out and told me, hey, guess what? It does fit. So that's kind of cool. So you don't need an adapter. You can buy yep, Maxis and you can actually add two of them. You can have two of them in this back rack as is and it's fully integrated. Now that we've gone over the specs of the Bound, let me tell you about the things that I liked about this e-bike. And I do wanna say that I've ridden this bike almost 200 miles. I've ridden this on a couple long trips. Um, I've been riding this bike for a while. So I wanted to throw in a few items that might be different than some of the other reviews you've seen. So here goes my list. The first one, and if you recall on the specs, is that this bike has a torque sensor. So most cargo e-bikes, especially the affordable ones, all come with a cadence sensor. And those can be very jumpy. Those can feel very unnatural. What I really like about this bike is that it comes with a torque sensor. And of late, a lot of e-bike companies, and especially Aventon, have gone all in with torque sensors. And the Bound is no exception. And the reason why is that it, or one of the reasons I think, is that it's more of a natural cycling feel. So as you're riding and you're pushing, it just feels like a regular bike. So it's not pushy, it's not jumpy, um, like a cadence sensor can be. So um, I really enjoy torque sensors, really enjoy the torque sensor on this bike because the more you push, the more power you can get. So um, it just feels, feels very natural, especially if you're uh, used to cycling a non e-bike. I also like the torque sensor because it seems to be more efficient with the battery use. So this bike has a 720 watt hour battery, which on the surface seems small, but I've gotten really good range out of this battery. Um, I recently went on a camping trip. I took this bike on a camping trip uh, with the trailer in tow. I had was carrying 150 pounds probably or plus in the rear rack and the trailer and myself. So I was kind of pushing the limits of, of the weight capacity or the payload of this bike. And I still was able to get 30 miles one way and still had only used 45% battery. Um, that was, I really didn't use it. I didn't use the throttle too much or high pedal assist levels, but still you get some really good range out of, the, out of this battery relative to bikes with a cadence sensor. The second thing I really liked is that with this bike stock, you get a lot of features that you don't tend to get with an affordable cargo e-bike. For example, it comes with a suspension. So most cargo e-bikes do not come with a suspension, definitely not the popular ones like the Radwagon, the Electric Expedition, the Flyer, the Blix Packa, none of those come with a suspension. So um, it's kind of nice that it comes with that feature. Some other ones are uh, hydraulic brakes. So most of these affordable cargo e-bikes do not come with hydraulic brakes. It also comes with a bunch of extra stock. Like you have other things that come stock with this. Like for example, you have the footboards or running boards. Not all your bikes come with that stock. Um, so if you get it, if you buy this bike, it comes with it. Um, you have a torque sensor, so that comes with it. So I think that that's another extra that comes included with this. You also have integrated front and, and rear lights, which tends to be standard. This one even has tail lights, so it has blinkers, um, which is kind of nice that it comes standard. So um, a lot of extras that you get with this e-bike that you don't normally get with an affordable cargo e-bike. The next thing I really liked, and we like this a lot about Aventum bikes in general, and we really believe that you're getting a premium bike 
at an affordable price. So it has a very premium feel, very buttoned up when it comes to, for example, the frame and the weld jobs. And for example, the, the fact that you have Tektor hydraulic brakes, you have a Shimano shifter, um, which is not, you know, the cheapest one. So definitely not entry level at all. So there is a very premium feel in general with this bike, the looks of it and the components and the extras that come with this bike kind of throughout. The next thing I really like about this bike is the frame. I don't think I've said that with any other bike or most bikes. The reason why I like this frame and especially being a cargo bike is that this bike out of all, and we have an article about cargo bikes actually, you should check it out on our website, but this bike has the lowest step over frame. So the, the distance from the ground to this level here, which is the lowest point on the bike and especially where you step over, it has the lowest step over height of any of the popular affordable cargo e-bikes. And that's really important because it makes it really easy to mount and dismount this bike. So to get on and off. Um, I also like the frame because not only is it easy to mount and dismount, which makes it very approachable for anyone, uh, it has a payload capacity of 440 pounds. So that's a lot higher than uh, the Rad Wagon, which is a way taller bike and it just seems bigger and less approachable, I think, to people. So I really like that about this bike. So not only does it is it easy to get on and off, it also is functional in the sense that you can carry a lot of weight. And then lastly, as it pertains to the frame, it's that people of different heights uh, can use this bike and use it comfortably. So if you're uh, on the shorter side uh, or you're on the taller side, you can adjust either, you know, the C, you can adjust the handlebars to make it a little bit taller. Um, and here, I can do this. So it'll be very comfortable for people of different heights. And I think that that's really important, especially with the cargo bike. And then lastly, the thing I really liked, and I've kind of struggled with this with other bikes, even a bike like the Electric Expedition, which is, I think, great. That's a great bike. But some of the things that I didn't like about this, that bike, I really love about this bike, which is it has a very sturdy uh, double kickstand. And that's really important, especially if you're carrying weight in the back. I mean, you could see here that I have two different child seats. I have a Yep Maxi, and then I have this other seat, a Quibble for, for older kids. And so I might be carrying uh, 80 to 90 pounds between my two children. And so it's important to have a sturdy kickstand. And I really like that about the uh, Event and Abound and that I think that this is a much sturdier kickstand than, for example, the one from the Electric Expedition. So now that I share the things that I liked, let me share the things that I didn't like about the Bound. I love this bike. There's a few things that I didn't like. It's not a big deal, but I did want to share those. So the first thing I didn't like, and again, these aren't huge issues, but I would say that the one that stood out to me was that the front handlebar can seem wobbly at, at times, and that's probably because it's a foldable uh, handlebar. And especially if you're carrying a lot of weight, like a couple times I was carrying a lot of weight, like when I went camping, I was carrying a trailer, I was carrying a lot of stuff in the back. I had a, uh, I had a Yeti cooler full of adult beverages in the back. So I was carrying a lot of weight and it definitely felt wobbly at times. So again, it might be because it's a foldable stem. Um, I've had to tighten this a couple times and it did help when I would tighten it. But I would say that that's probably my biggest negative about this bike. But again, not something that to me would stop me from buying it. Like, and I, thought about this a little bit more of late, especially when I went on my camping trip because I rode there on the bike from my house, was that there is no integrated dual battery option. So that seems to be very standard now. A lot of bikes come with it, the Electric Expedition, the Flyer uh, L885 cargo bike. So those are integrated for dual battery. This one isn't. Obviously you can buy a second battery from a Venton and I thought about that. Um, but uh, it's not integrated, which I thought was a negative. And then the last thing, which is, this is really nitpicking. Um, I've been using this bike quite a bit with a Burley kid trailer. And if you want to install a Burley trailer on this bike, you have to attach a hitch. And the only way to attach the hitch, at least stock, is to remove the footboard. So I had to remove the footboard on the other side. You can't see this. 
but I had to remove it in order to attach the trailer. Now there's probably some things I could do, like I could buy a bolt that's longer and then kind of extend under the footboard, but I, I just haven't had the time or the energy to do that. But again, this is more of nitpicking uh, that to me, that wasn't ideal. All right, so we've gone over the specs, things I liked, things I didn't like, which weren't many. Let me close it out for you. I've ridden a lot of cargo affordable e-bikes. I've ridden all the top ones. And I have to say that this is my favorite one. Um, I've been riding cargo e-bikes now for two and a half years. And I've ridden different styles, different frame sizes, different weight capacities, different motors. This has been my favorite by far. And this is one that I want to keep for a while. Um, and there's many reasons for that. One of them is I love having the torque sensor because of the natural cycling feeling that I get. I love the premium feel and product that Aventum put out with this cargo bike. I really enjoyed how sturdy it is because of the kickstand and just the design and the build quality. And then also it's very functional. So you can carry a lot of weight. It's set up, integrated for to add the popular child seats. You can add a trader like I did, and um, you can get some pretty good range out of it. So, so overall, I think that this is a cargo e-bike that I'll be riding for a while, and then I'll be riding with my kids, camping trips. For me, it's been great. It really meshes well with the type of cycling that I want to do. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments for me. Appreciate you watching. Thank you. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment. Visit us at top5ebikes.com or some of our social media accounts. Thank you.